mixing. Okay, so now you can see this has a little bit of that purpley color in it. And, um, you yeah, know, I always just hope my paints don't run off my, my um, palette when I'm painting. So um, I'm going to start off by just kind of sketching this um, goldfinch. And so I kind of want it to take up most of the canvas, so... Gonna just kind of bring that down. Mark out where the beak's gonna go. Like that. And then the chest kind of comes down. And I'll put in a, a twig. I'm not going to put in that metal pole. Just kind of skip, just rough in a branch. Okay. And, okay, I'm just kind of, I start off by sketching like this. It's just the way I, the way I work and then I can adjust the drawing later and um, put in that little black cap there and the eye and one thing when you're painting a bird is you kind of you can look and see where the eye kind of is right in the middle most times of the beak. So so you just kind of have to observe where everything is kind of comparatively. So another thing I'll do is I'll look at where the beak is and sort of the negative space between gives me something to gauge so I can tell that this belly needs to come in a little bit more. But I don't, you know, I don't go for exact. I usually just, I'm happy with getting, getting it kind of close. Mostly I'm really concerned with the, the accuracy of the eye and the beak and everything because otherwise it can look a little too cartoony for me which I, in the early stages, you know, you have to get used to drawing birds. So I look at my original paintings and say, oh, that's kind of funny. But they're always cute, even if they aren't like super perfect, realistic paintings. The birds are so pretty. So... Just keep I'm looking and comparing and I think I want to get this beak a little bit higher up here. Okay, so once you kind of get it in there and you feel like you've got it kind of good enough, happy with that, um, I can sort of work on, I want to get in the eye and the the beak and everything more accurate so I'm just gonna go and get some black and put in some of that darker those darker feathers there and for those of you who are new and don't forget to follow my Instagram because I'm going to do a lot more lives this year try to maybe make it if Thursday's a good day, I'll do Thursday's live. And um, I also teach full length lessons on Patreon, kind of step by step. And um, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I'll put in some of that, those black feathers too, to 
just kind of leaving some of those spots where there's some white. But one of the things with painting is um, you sort of have to schedule yourself the time to do it anyway. So I thought it's kind of nice to be able to share the process while I paint. And I don't usually block in with such a tiny brush, so I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. Okay. So I'm going to block in some of this shadow color. And when I look for reference photos, I really will pick out ones with nice contrast like that because that really gives you, um, it just gives it the bird more dimension and it helps you out with getting a painting that just has more more life to it. So I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre, a little transparent red oxide and um, some of that cad yellow that I've got and I'm going to get that darker yellow in there first and with yellow yellow can be tricky because um, a lot of it's it's one of those value things if you don't get the darks in there you'll you won't get those lighter bright yellows to show so you have to make sure you get the the darker values in so I'm just blocking in kind of roughly where I see there's going to be some shadow there like that and get some of that yellow in there again and go with a lighter mix and block in where there's some of that lighter the lighter yellow parts and I'm just going to blend a little under the eye so that I can get that kind of shadow where there's the there's that little eyelid under the eye of the bird. Well, I'm just thank you to all who have joined and are watching my video. And um I do full length lessons on Patreon and um tutorials for beginners and for more advanced. But I think everyone can learn something, no matter whether it's beginner or advanced. You just learn something every time you paint. So I'm gonna just, this is just a rough block in of, and kind of the values going from light to dark there. And, um, Now I want to block in this this um, white shadow color here. So I'm going to get some white and a little bit of Viridian. And it's hard because you can't. I can't get everything in the camera. I wish I could to show you all the mixing, but I'll kind of give you a look at my palette so far, so you can see. This is the mix for the the white viridian little bit of yellow ochre if it's too cold mix in some of that yellow ochre so it warms it right up and um, put in a little bit of that see it's still so cool so I'm going to add some little bit of that transparent um, red oxide to it just to kind of um, warm it up a little Okay, so I'm just going to block in some of that, kind of blend it a little, and just put in that, there's some of that down there, and you could put a little stroke of that in where the, the white patch on that um, wing is. <laughs> 
I start to not even be able to say the words of the parts of the bird once I get drawing here, once I get painting. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up a color for the beak, and I think I'll just do a little yellow ochre and probably some uh, orange. Yeah, orange, yellow ochre, and then I'm going to, that'll be the main part, but just to make it easier for yourself, just get a little bit of that red oxide and get in some of that red oxide because you want to show where the little, you know, beak separation is and a little bit of shadow underneath. So if you put the orange mix down first, you are going to have trouble later adding that in because you've got all that white and so it just saves you time to get some of that dark in there first. Well, hello there, uh, everyone. Thank you for the compliment there. <laughs> so I, um, I've got my camera set up so I can see some of your comments and everything, but I'm mostly painting, but it's fun to socialize too. So I'm just gonna now use some of that mix and and oh hi Karen I'm gonna put this little bit of highlight in now and you see now I can leave the line where the beak is I don't mess it up um, kind of leave that in there you see for the beak so and I'm going to now go and add a little more of that red oxide in there with some transparent red oxide and some orange just to kind of blend in a little bit of that shadow. And of course later we'll, we can add more to it but right now I'm just sort of blocking things in. And you can take a little bit. I dried my brush off and you can get a little bit of that black on your brush again and just sort of pull some of those feathers across just to get that detail in there. And um, I'll use the background to cut out anything I don't want there. So now I'm going to um, just get in, I want to keep blocking in the wing, so finish that off. I'm going to get some, I won't block it all in with, with black, so I'll use some, you know, ultramarine blue and a little bit of that brown oxide to create sort of a dark grayish undertone, grayish blue, like that and just sort of get in some of those kind of there there's a lot of feathers that aren't you know even though the it's black it's not all black so you kind of have to have something so that's just some ultramarine blue and some brown oxide and a little bit of white to kind of make that bluey gray color It's just a little more interesting. Okay, and then um, I can just sort of clean up that a little. Okay, so now everything's sort of blocked in. And um, so what you can do is I'm going to go back to the work on the eye a little bit. So just, um, there's this little bit of detail work around the eye. And so you can get a little bit of this mixture. And um, I'll put that in there, just kind of put in those little eyelid sort of thing. And then I can, if you put it in first, 
you know, then you can shape it from the inside out using the black. You can kind of cut it out on both sides. So you don't have to be as exact. And so now I've got that in there. It looks kind of big, but you'll see if I get a little black and just sort of work in the shape. I can kind of cut out some of that. So I can go in and see I can carve out some of that extra paint and now it looks like a lot smaller. and easier to paint than having to draw that in with a little tiny brush or the edge of your brush, which sometimes I do, but always trying to make it a little simpler for everyone to do. And now I can go in and I'm gonna just take away some of this paint so you can see it better. The drawing was, I got carried away with the, the feathers there. So anyways, um, just go get some more of that red oxide, transparent red oxide, and just sort of work in some of those shadows there. And I sometimes will add just to really warm things up a little, like really warm things up. I'll add a little bit of red. I've got some quinacridone red and I'll put that underneath there just to really get things. Just gonna blend that a little. And then go back to your lighter mix again and kind of go and put that little highlight there. And get a little more white in that beak mixture. And Really get that that highlight there. Okay, so um, this is oil paint. Um, I'm using just you know um, the basics oil paint. It's all kind of either Gamblin or Windsor Newton, and some of the Utrecht paint. And if you have any questions that I don't see, because I don't look at the stream the whole time, I'm really, this is one of my, probably my third ever live streams or fourth live streams on Instagram. So just put, leave me a comment in the comments if you have any questions and I'll check them later and get back to you. And so I'm just going to block in this these real darker areas now lock those in some more and I'm um, just gonna bring that up and down by the tail there there's some black And again, if you don't like everything, um, I tend to do a lot of, um, I'll, I'll use the edges later to sort of shape and reshape everything. So, yeah, and um, I will do some demo. I do do demos in acrylic too, so I, I, I'll do something. I do go, 
I do start dark and go to light, but I don't do the darkest dark. It's sort of more um, kind of a mid-tone range than I build up to the light. And um, that's just a question that um, someone had if I paint dark to light. But I do feel that if I get some of the darker um, values in first, it I can build on it easier. So, all right, so I'm still building. So just stick with me here. Okay, so if you squint down and look at the reference photo, it's kind of hard to see because the iPad on when it gets in the video gets a little bit washed out. But if you squint down, this is a lot, much, much darker than this. So, and I, and I haven't added any mid-tone values yet. So just going to start by adding some of the lighter values up here on this bird. And it's a little tricky for me painting and filming like this because you're not very close to your painting so that you can get the camera in there. So sometimes I'll do this, but you can just touch it up again. And I'm just gonna get that light in there and also with yellow if you don't get the darks in it's just impossible to bring out the light and that's one of the most common mistakes that I see when teaching people end up if it's a yellow flower or a yellow bird they end up just getting really frustrated with with it and sunflowers that's why another thing I like to paint that uses different shades and values of yellow. So now you see there's kind of this light and then it goes to dark. So we need to mix up a, a mid-tone. So you can get, I've got this, it says it on the tube that it's cad yellow light, but it really looks like cad yellow medium to me. So I'm just gonna bring that in. I'm just using that to blend. And I blend in with that darker underpaint now. You can see how it works. I can blend it in. And some of the shadows are cooler and warm. Some of them are warmer. As you get down low here, they get warmer. Some of these ones up here are more of a, they have a cooler feel to them. So, and when you blend that in, just be careful not to, you can see how as you blend, it kind of starts to flatten the bird out. So you might want to go back and get some more of your mixture that you used for the shadow again and re kind of reapply it up see to bring in that that depth there. like that. And then um, you can again start to see the drawing a little better. So I might go and this wing needs to kind of come down a little more like that. And kind of come around the body a bit more here. Plus it's when you're talking a lot, you're you're still thinking too much. <laughs> so when I'm painting and talking a lot, it's not gonna be as good as when I'm just thinking about the painting. Okay. So, um, 
now just going to get in some of those the color for the little feet there the little legs I'm just gonna use the dark um, just some red oxide and I can use a little bit of that quinacridone red and there's a little bit of orange in there just to get that peachy color later I'm going to start with the darkest color of the feet there and um, kind of bring this in here like that Okay, and okay, so now everything's sort of blocked in. I did add a little bit of, I did more work on the yellow than anything else, pretty much, and the beak. But now I can start adding some light um, colors to the white. And um, so I'm going to go back to that white mixture and just add some more that kind of grayish white and add some a little bit of white to make that there's a little bit of light that hits the tail feather here and just kind of block that in and you could add some of the that tip to the wing there and then go and place some of those real white spots on the wing. Start off with that kind of lighter gray white and move up. And you can mix a tiny, if you mix a tiny, tiny dab of um, orange, I'll show you my palette so far. If you mix a, a tiny dab of orange to your white, you'll get a little bit more uh, the white just stands out more. So I'm going to just do that and add a little bit of that to those little wings. And here. And um, and then there's these pretty wings up here. And I'm just going to go load my brush with some paint and sort of put that in. And same with up here. The There's a bunch of white feathers that kind of go in. So I just want to get that in kind of simple. And then you can, if you want to just drag some of those edges down, you can. And then I'll put a few more there. And there's some little little feathers kind of coming down here, which I'm just blending those ones purposely in more because that's the way they look to me. And um, I'll kind of blend this edge in a little. Okay, now we have some, we can go back and work some more of the bright yellow light that's showing. So I'll get some of that, that cad yellow light and just sort of pop that in where I see the light hitting the bird. like that and up here to sort of get some more of that lighter yellow and put that in up here and so if any of you are new, um, I'll be doing more of these live streams this year and probably just 
you know, stick to Thursdays if that works for everyone. And um, if you have any ideas of things you would like me to paint, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And, um... So I'm just adding some more of that lighter yellow up there. And you can see the underpaint shows through and, and that's what gives the feathers sort of that feathery look. And I'm gonna just bring a few of those feathers over the black there. Flowers, yeah, I will do flowers for sure. I'm going to get a little more of that um, bluish white in some of these little spots. Get some of that. I put out some ultramarine blue. I'll just mix that in with that gray mixture and just put a bit of that blue in underneath there just kind of gives it a pretty color to give it that shadow and kind of sets it apart from the bird, makes it really kind of sink in. And let's darken this a little more. Just kind of cheating here using some uh, black. <laughs> so, and um, Gonna go and now add a little bit of a highlight to the our bird's head using some. I've just got some ultramarine blue. I'm just gonna mix that in with a little white and a little black, and I'll put a bit of that on top here. Might need a little more white there. I don't know, it's hard to say uh, some of your your um, user names. I can't quite see a name, but it's uh, Enver OK says, great as always. Thank you so much for that uh, encouraging word. And, um, you know, this year I'm trying to be uh, braver coming on and doing more live streams because, I don't know, a lot of artists probably are like me. They paint on their own and it's sort of hard to know how to get organized and share it and um yeah it, it this video I think what happens with these videos is they go into my they get saved on Instagram in my Instagram I think if you click the little button that looks like a video player you can watch the whole thing later I wish I knew how to work it better but, um, yeah, I think that's how it works. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so now I am I can do some more detail work here. Um, I might want to simplify some things, like these brush strokes look too, they're just too much, too many little details. So sometimes I'll go and get rid of some of those details because it's like, it's just too busy for me and so sometimes you just you take some things away that you had on there earlier so and then I'll look at shape so I'm looking at this little curve and mine looks a little straight so I'll just kind of curve make mine go a little more curvy and I'll look at some of the angles like this here I could clean this up a little just sort of fix that a bit and get a little bit more of that. There's a lot more white in there, so I can kind of bring that in. And um, yeah, I think yellow is one of the trickiest. So I've taught lots of art classes in person and a lot of the time if I do yellow daffodils or yellow anything, it's like, it seems like something 
you know you want to do and then you get started and if you don't get that dark in there you'll just be dealing with this flat white bird so really get in the that darker um uh shadow color first so just um same with when you're painting daffodils or sunflowers you want to kind of build up to those bright yellow petals and I'll do I do a lot of sunflower demonstrations because they're my one of my favorite flowers so you'll get to see more yellow mixes and things like that so I'm just getting that spot in and it wasn't really going on small the way I wanted it so what you can do is just cut out some of the white using I've got quite a bit of black underpaint there, so I'm just kind of carving out that little reflection. So yeah, um, Ring Bolt's asking, are you using any medium? And I don't use any medium. I just wash my brush with the Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. This stuff here, I can never get it right, but that stuff. And I don't, I don't use any mediums because they smell really strong. So, um, they, I just get a headache from, from them. So I, I probably, I just quit. Whenever a teacher pulled his stuff out and used it, I would get a headache. So I just never used it. I don't even really like using the turp because it's, it's super strong for me anyways. And I I do like using water based oils because they um, they don't you don't need the turp you can just wash them after like you would your acrylic brushes so I really I love that they're just a little a little stickier to use than oils so so I just stick to this for now so um, now I can put a little. I'll go back and add a little white to my mixture that I used for the the little claws and that was just some brown transparent I think I mixed some red oxide a little quinacrinone red and probably a little brown oxide I just to get that darker just sort of get those little highlights there and, you know, you could, uh, at this point, what I want to do is start thinking of fun colors to enhance the background. So I started with that wash, which was some um, dioxys in violet and some of that brown oxide to give this sort of color. But you, before I go and put a background on, I'll take a little something like I really love these two colors I'll just sh show you um you've got the uh dioxazine violet and then you've got this um magenta color and I'm just for some reason blanking on the name but it's it's another violet color from Windsor Newton and they're usually really close to each other on the shelf so I sometimes will want to put in some complementary colors. So just here and there, because I'm going to, I want to keep my background simple, but not boring. So, you know, I'm going to put in a bit of the purples because it complements the bird. So you can, you can put a bit of that around and then you can kind of wipe off some of it. And then when you use a different color, like your main color, if it's like a light gray or something, it won't just keep mixing too much with the purples. So I'm before I start getting too excited about the background, I'm gonna go and just kind of finish putting in the branch because I'll just get a little of that brown oxide and a little bit of that ultramarine blue and just kind of just go in and darken that branch a little and um, 
some of my paintings, you know, if you follow me, have a lot more detail, you know, lots of flowers and stuff, but you sometimes just uh, keeping it simple is kind of a good idea too. So that's kind of the main um, part of it is the bird and everything. And for those of you who have been watching, I do teach on Patreon. And um, in that, I, I show everything like I, because I film it not live. I film it so you can see all the mixing and all the steps a little bit more clear. Because it's on Instagram, I have to kind of use this little tiny uh, frame so you can't show everything. It's either I show the mixing in the bird or I just show the reference in the bird. So I'm just now, I mixed up a little gray just to show you what I would do, kind of put in some of those little splotches of paint and then kind of leave in, leave some of those purples. So I'll just put the paint on with my palette knife, but it, you can palette knife the whole thing in, but because I didn't you know, do the bird palette knife. You kind of want it to match. So I'm going to just get some, just get my brush now and kind of go in and clean up some of these edges here. And you'll see that those underpaint colors, you can leave some of them showing through. You know, sometimes if you really want to get into that, you could paint the whole, some people paint the whole canvas red or they painted a, a color that they want to show through ahead of time. But I like to sort of paint everything all at once. I feel like if I, if I paint even the color before, I start to kind of constrain myself to like something I wasn't really you know, feeling like that day. Maybe I felt like it one day, but not the next day. So you kind of, you kind of have to go with what works for you. But another thing you can do is paint uh, the background in acrylic because it dries so fast. And then you can paint your, your bird or whatever you're painting on top. So... And then again, I like to create texture and, you know, backgrounds that aren't too, too boring. So, oh, Patreon is a, it's like a membership site and I've got all my full length lessons on it. And then you can just watch them at, at your own pace, at your own time. And I've got loads of lessons on there. So all kinds of cardinals and flowers and just loads of lessons and it's um you can join for twenty nine dollars a month and and paint all the different lessons. I have some of them on my website and you can go see what what um lessons are available. I've I've posted some on my website for you to look at. But there's just tons more. I've been doing this for a few years. And um, so it's Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And it's, well, the link is in my profile. And um, that's a good way to learn. So, but I, I'm going to be doing lots of these little tutorials too. And yeah, the link, um, just go to my link in... Instagram and there should be a link for Patreon there. There's also on Krista Eaton um, dot com. You can find the link there or just send me a message and I can send you the link. But you can cancel anytime so you can go on and paint whatever you want and then you can cancel 
you're bored, <laughs> don't like the paintings anymore, just you can cancel anytime. I just use that platform because I got tired of managing and I want to have more time to paint, so. And so, um, now you've got kind of a purpley background, but you can change it up. So I'll add, add a little bit of white and um, maybe a little bit of orange to my white. And um, kind of come up with something to kind of contrast. Because I like to have a few different colors in there. So, you know, you could put in some different colors. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle was, she's with me from way, uh, way back when I started. And she is an awesome painter. Michelle has become a really amazing artist and I love to see my students just blossom and and grow and um, so that's one of the best parts for me. So just adding that little bit of a little bit of that white and orange to it you sort of it's, then it's not all purple, you know, so you can just play with it, you know, you, you just see what you like, and, but I, I tend to keep, to keep it simple, I want to go with, um, colors that are kind of complementary, and, um, and just sort of play with color once you get going. Then I can even get a little more white to that mixture and just sort of even put a little bit, a few, a few lighter spots up here. So now you've got the background in, um, you can kind of go and see what else you can do. So I might go and just, I don't want that branch to compete so much with the the bird. So I'm gonna go and just sort of change the value, change the the color a little so it's not so, not so, you know, dark and light. So I'll get a little, I don't know, get a little bit of that ultramarine blue and some of that dioxazine violet. And I'm gonna just go and put a little bit of that in there just for fun. Play again with the color of the line because a, a twig is essentially, um, in your, in painting words, is just a line. So make it interesting. It's like cooking, you know, you add more flavor, different flavors. So, um, and then I might just soften some of these branches over here a little. So you can <laughs> just make sure you wipe your brush a little because I'm getting my, but you can always go back with that lighter background color and just sort of tweak it a little and kind of go in and make the little, you don't want the bird to have big, super thick legs. So I'm just kind of going in and shaping now the, the legs and just kind of go in there. And sometimes I'll just drag a brush over some of those just to Soften them right up a little. And then, then you can go back over and bring out some of those. If you take out too much of the, too many, 
details out, then you kind of go, oh, oh. But then now you see it's less, it's just less competitive with the black on the bird. And so I want to just clean up some of these um, edges here. So I'm going to get in some, some of that yellow and just sort of bring that over there. And you can sort of take away some of that edge there. Just so certain areas you want to show up more in certain areas just isn't as important. So you can take away some of that contrast. Like maybe here I want people to be drawn more to the the face, so I'll darken that. And I'm gonna just kind of fix the beak a little. Sometimes it's not till the end you start to wake up, your your art brain wakes up and you're sort of going, oh, okay, the beak's a little bit off there. So. And um, just clean up the edges because this canvas is a little rough, so the edges are not as smooth as if you were painting on like a smooth surface, like a gesso board or something like that. So. Well, I think I don't even gotta get back some of this under paint there to darken that a little bit, that edge. Like that. And you can kind of add a little bit more detail now. Just a few little feathers like that. Kind of bring a few of those little feathers off the back there. And I'll add that little highlight. There's a little highlight coming on that feather there. So this brush I'm using is just one of these Michaels brushes, the Princeton Aspen Flat. It's a number four. And these are you know, pretty inexpensive from Michaels, so, and they work good. I do like um, flat brushes because you can do a lot with them. Hello, Jodine. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I can see that you guys are watching. So, um, might even get a little bit of that orange and just put a little highlight on the branch just for fun. Just have fun with it, you know, and get a little dab of that and you can put a, a little bit there. A little bit of that orange around there. Hello, Indrani from India. Welcome. So I think, um, let me just see if I can move this a little closer for you. So, there you go. And I think that is about it. I've been on here for about an hour. So you guys will be able to watch the, the video after, whoopsies. And um, 
it should be uh, saved. I think it goes into like a file with videos on Instagram. So, and um, yeah, so that's about all I can say. I will go live next Thursday at the same time, 9.30, and um, paint a flower of some sort, probably kind of a winter pansy or something, you know, for the season, or like a primula, something that's sort of seasonal. I like to paint seasonal flowers. So um, there you go. And oh, thanks, Diana. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. So I, um, yeah, and like I say, just, you know, leave leave me a message of a certain flower you're struggling with and you want to learn more about um just don't don't be afraid to ask and i will look forward to doing more of these um little demos for you guys this year thank you so much for watching